So on this side, we've got the medial malleolus. So those tendons that you were feeling earlier and warming um, with that friction rub, um, those were in this area behind um, behind the medial malleolus. Um, and you know, again, I'm not totally convinced that I can feel every single one of them, but if I get right in there, I can kind of feel like there's one tendon rolling underneath my thumb. Can you feel me doing that? Yeah, I can feel that. Um, and then if I go a little bit further, I can feel like there's another one right back in there. Yeah. Um, and kind of knowing the order um, is helpful, the tibialis posterior flexor digitorum and flexor hallucis. And that's also a point where there's a nerve and artery close to the surface. Um, the t uh, tibial nerve and the posterior tibial artery are in that area as well. Um, do you have any considerations you think about with um, when arteries and nerves are close to the surface? Do you have to exercise caution and um, we do. more than other yeah, areas? We lighten our pressure in those areas where nerves and blood vessels and, and bones sure. actually are close to the surface. Um, because if you push hard on those places, one, it's not going to feel very good. Right. And two, yeah. it might actually hurt something. Right. <laughs> so, Which we don't want. So you we want to want. Uh, both slow your velocity mm -hmm. and lighten your pressure in these, in okay. these areas. Um, sure. If we uh, look at the medial malleolus and about the position of the lateral, and you just drew a line straight across, um, you're not quite at the ankle joint yet. Um, if you were right in the middle of that line, you'd have to come to about here to really find that point where the tibia and the talus are separated. And you actually do have to kind of push a little bit to get into that space. Um, and I'm getting tendons in there too, there we go. So if he, can you just flex your ankle up and down? Okay, so right in there, you can see this tendon coming down is that tibialis anterior tendon attaching on the first metatarsal. And then a bunch of extensor tendons for the big toe and then uh, for all the rest of the toes coming through that space. And right this this point here where it's kind of a steep angle on those tendons, that angle is created by the retinaculum because mm -hmm. it's holding it down like, right. a, like a really tight bracelet. Uh, but right in that space right there is where you'd expect the um, tibiotalar joint to be. Now if you go over to the medial side, below the medial malleolus, that's where you're going to feel the head of the talus. Um, same bone right. from here, but its head points over on this side. And then you might be able to feel a little bit of a space. Uh, right there is the space, and then the next bone would be the navicular bone. Um, that then leads down to the first metatarsal. So it's like bang, 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 um, right in a row. And those are the bones that are forming that high medial arch in right. somebody's foot, so they're all right in sequence to each other. Um, if we're on the lateral side of the foot, um, again, if you have a, a muscular foot, you can usually even just see this at rest. This, this kind of ball of muscle mm -hmm. on the lateral side, these are the short extensors of the toes, or extensor digitorum brevis or extensor hallucis brevis. If you wiggle your toes, yeah, you can see this little ball of muscle um, dancing yep. un <laughs> underneath. Mm -hmm. And then um, on either side of these, um, you should be able to feel muscle within here. These are the abductors of the big toe and the abductor of the little toe. And then the only other bony prominence in the foot to mention um, is this little guy right out here. You can see there's a point that is more lateral than the rest. Um, and this is going to be the base of the fifth metatarsal. Um, I think the only reason to point this out is that this is um, 
a, a kind of a common fracture in the foot um, mm -hmm. is an avulsion fracture of this um, fifth metatarsal. Well, how does a massage in an area like this differ than something in the thigh? Because the muscles are tiny and there's so much more bone than there is muscle. So I try to let the bones do a bit of the massage for me. So, for instance, I will uh, get down like this and wiggle the bones back and forth and slide down between the tarsals and metatarsals and tendons of the foot. Is that feeling good, Matt, or yeah, it's is it it's not too hard? No. Okay. Um, people like a real detailed uh, massage, and mm -hmm. because it is the most dis distal aspect of the extremity, massage can be good for facilitating the, the return of venous blood uh, from the foot Mm -hmm. and um, and also lymph fluid although uh, if somebody has edema you would want to do manual lymph drainage before you did any kind of deep massage at all and get some of that fluid out of there because you can actually damage tissues oh. from from giving a firm massage while they're while, while they're full of fluid oh, okay so yeah. a manual lymph drainage can you explain what that means sure um, the lymph nodes uh, that serve the leg are here in the groin. So if I was going to do some manual lymph drainage for Matt here, I would start with uh, just the pads of my hands sort of attached to the skin and what we're doing then is just moving the skin over the muscle. So it's, um, it's an interesting form of massage. It doesn't look like much uh, and every now and then you want to kind of give a longer pull. So what we're doing is actually manually mm -hmm. sort of I'm gonna pumping. I'm going to get a closer shot of this. the lymph fluid since it doesn't have its own pump. Mm -hmm. um, so you start up high so that you can begin to clear get the fluid area. moving, clear yeah. that area, and then you move down. And uh, even with this form of, like that almost feels like nothing, but do you like good. it? Yeah. It does feel, it does good. feel good. It's um, People are beginning to do this more and more uh, as part of a detoxification regimen. Mm. I I don't know very much about that. I haven't Neither examined I. it myself. Uh, I began doing manual lymph drainage for people who had had lymph nodes removed uh, for looking yeah. for cancer, you and know, had problems um, with and flow. had yeah. problems with lymphedema in their arms or in their ankles. And I get very good results. Uh, from the form of manual lymph drainage that, that I am showing you now uh, in that kind of situation. And um, as Matt just uh, said too, you know, it does apparently feel like you're doing something even though mm -hmm. it looks like nothing. <laughs> sure. Yeah.